Welcome back everyone. Today we're doing a video that's a little bit different than what we normally do and that's because there's some weird things going on that we will explain here in a second. Um, but I have a review up of the RMA 1155 plate. It's been up for years and about two weeks ago I became aware anyway of some issues. Uh, possible issues with the plate, I suppose I should say, um, it, because people are asking me about it. So I looked into what was going on in social media. RMA had put out some statements and uh, it piqued my interest. So I did some investigation as to what is actually going on. And uh, full disclosure, I have reached out to the folks at RMA. I've reached out to the folks at NIJ. The folks at RMA did get back to me and they also did send just in full disclosure, the plates that we're gonna test later on in the video. That said, doesn't really impact what I'm about to say because everything I'm going to show you is black and white and then we're going to shoot up some plates. So uh, if I remember, I will put a timestamp here for those of you that want to skip ahead and not go into what is going on with the NIJ, uh, where you guys can just see the shooting. I should put that here on your screen and I should also note this is going to be a Mug Club video as well. So we're going to do our free videos here on Rumble and YouTube. Then we're going to head over to Mug Club where we do content uh, creator exclusive content. Um, today we're going to be going over California's new gun laws and what's probably going to happen in the next day or two uh, with pistol braces. If you guys are interested in that content and all the other creators that are over there, Steven Crowder, uh, Nick DiPaolo, Brian Callen, Hodge Twins, uh, Alex Jones, and many others, um, you guys can sign up for it with a discount code that will get you a free month here at the link on my screen. The geese are very excited about that. So, all right, let's get into what is going on with RMA. The geese were going a little bit crazy there. So let's get into what is going on. I went over to the Department of Justice website where the NIJ safety notice is published. You guys can see it here on your screen. It's dated September 1st. And uh, basically it goes by and says the RMA armament ballistic Mod model 1155 has been permanently removed from the NRJ compliant products list due to unresolved safety concerns. Uh, you guys can read the rest of it. And um, just for folks that don't know, the NIJ is like the national, uh, I suppose you'd say like accreditation uh, for armor. They have a process that they go through for all uh, armor products in America and companies can submit to be on the list or not. And in order to get on the list, the first time it's anywhere from eighteen dollars to $30,000 for each SKU. So each product you have. So in this case, like the 1155, right? That the companies have to pay. Uh, the armor is taken by the NIJ randomly from the production line. That's kind of part of the process. And then it is independently tested. And then to be on the list, to stay on the list, it has to be tested every year. Uh, this plate, I believe, was first approved in 2017. It's probably around where I did my video as well, my initial video on it. And it has passed every test since then until this year, according to the NIJ. But we'll get into that here in a second. I'm not sure that's exactly true. So that is the NIJ summary that you guys can see there. And then if you go over to the RMA website, they have a post about it where it has all their different histories uh, for each year since 2017. You guys can check it out. And I actually went over to the NIJ site and pulled the actual test results. So apparently in this test, and I'm gonna roll them in here so you guys can see it. Like, so it's not just me making this up and you guys can see it. And I'll leave links to all this stuff down below as well so you guys can check it out. I know there's probably other channels that are gonna get into this because this has been featured on We Like Shooting and several other YouTube channels. Um, but I don't think they've gotten into the detail I did here. I spent hours researching this. So uh, the ballistic resistance test here is part of the FIT test, which is the annual test that the NIJ does. Uh, that test basically just evaluates if it's stops uh, the threat, unlike the initial test. So like the initial NIJ test is actually very thorough, measures back face deformation, has heat, water, and a bunch of different elements to it. And the fit test is essentially what I'm about to do at the range, but in a more controlled environment, if that makes sense. So they're just shooting it and see if it, anything goes through, essentially is what the fit test is. You guys can see the data for uh, the velocity of the rounds that were shot through it and how it stopped everything. And again, I believe they sampled eight different plates for this test, this fit test. And you can see the data on each one of them. Um, and it passed according to, and again, this is from the actual NIJ website, uh, their fit test data. So no issues at all um, with this one. And then if you go over to the secondary, like, I guess like supporting documentation of it, which it says it's a follow up to follow up on the test is how you can read it. And you can go ahead and look right through it there. Basically it says here, 
if I scroll down. And if we go down to page three, you'll see the calibration of the equipment when it was tested. And then it also says where the failure was. And it says test sample failed due to perforation of the sample ID. And they go there. So just uh, as I alluded to earlier, the way the NIJ testing works is they come to the factory and actually take random samples of whatever the product is. And at that point, it's out of the control of whatever manufacturer uh, that is making the the armor so it goes down to in this case it went to their maryland facility for testing went down to the testing uh, facility and one thing i should point out here is that on the calibration or the test equipment here it doesn't say uh, the clay that's used in the back of it not that it was calibrated or renewed or anything like that and so uh, basically they said that there was a perforation and from Everything I can gather just listening to different interviews and things like that, um, as well as what the folks at RMA have said, uh, the best guess I can come up with as to why the NIJ is saying this plate failed, and I should note there I have uh, photos of the actual plate itself here that you guys can see, and I'll be rolling in, and you will see there's absolutely, it says perforation. There's absolutely no perforation or pass-through at all on these plates that they're claiming is the failed plate. And from what I've gathered, again, just listening to different people, one guy I listened to was a retired NIJ tester. Like he actually you know, worked there, I think for like 17 years or something like that. And um, best guess is that they saw something in the clay behind the plate and assumed it was perforation. But people who I've, two people who I've heard that have discussed the process at the NIJ say that the clay isn't ever really tested, uh, excuse me, changed out, not often. Maybe once a year is what I've heard. So more likely than not, it's from a different test and somebody either intentionally or unintentionally, and we'll get to that here in a minute, basically said it was a failure. When, if you look at the actual plate, again, I'm rolling in the actual images here that are published online. You can look at them. Uh, the plate didn't fail. So uh, one of a couple things is going on, either what I just said, and it was absolute error by the people at the NIJ, and it's just, it's just, a mistake but the problem with nij testing is and i've talked about this in the past that uh, i have issues with the nij the organization shocker right <laughs> government organization i have issues with and they've done some things in the past that have been questionable this is not the first one and the problem with it is there's a lot of contracts that depend on nij testing and again i've talked about this in multiple armor videos is that nij testing is good it's a good process but i don't think it's the end all be all the problem is there's a lot of like sheriff's departments police departments uh, federal agencies, overseas uh, militaries, etc., that won't take plates or any type of armor that isn't NIJ certified. So a lot of times you can look at different products online uh, and there'll be one SKU that's NIJ certified and it's like twice the price of the same exact product that's not NIJ certified. And that just goes into all the cost that goes into getting something NIJ certified. They have to pass it along to the customer. And so either what happened was one of two things, either a mistake somebody saw something in the clay and didn't check on the actual plate itself to see if there was penetration through the plate which that would be i mean i'm a youtuber and that's the first thing i look at so if somebody at the actual official testing facility didn't look at the back of the plate and assume there was penetration when there wasn't that we have bigger issues than what i'm even talking about here the other side is that there was some sort of uh i don't know what the right word is uh intentional erroneous reporting going on from whoever was conducting the test at the NIJ due to different competing contract interests. That's really all I can come up with. And at this point, I think you guys have seen enough here to make your own decision. So I will leave it at that. And we're going to head out to the field and do the fun part of it where we're going to take these plates and see what they can and cannot stop. And then after that, we're headed over to Mug Club to discuss those California gun laws. So let's head out to the range and get on that. Time to start the testing. We have our 1903 beautiful rifle here and some black tip 30 out six. So that is the standard for this plate to meet. And obviously we have plenty of barrel length and I'm standing here at what, maybe seven yards. So I'm probably gonna eat some ceramic, but you guys in the past have said that this is how you like your armor testing in terms of camera setups. So, hey, I make the videos for you guys, not for me. So let's see if it'll stop it. Let's find out. I 
As y'all saw from the slow-mo, we hit it right there. Lots of broken ceramic, as you guys can see, and no pass-through. We did have some deformation there on the back, um, but I should note that what we're using for a backer there is road trash, I guess you could say. It was somebody dumped it on the side of the road, uh, some drawers, I filled them up with dirt. So there's plenty of force behind it uh, to stop the impact, if you will. It's probably, uh, probably weighs a good 60, 70 pounds in terms of the dirt we have filled up there. So plenty of resistance, but it stopped 30 out six. We're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep going until it dies because that's what we do here on this channel. Let's go. Unfortunately, the sun keeps hiding behind the cloud. Brighter light makes for better uh, slow motion shots, but we're gonna keep going anyway. We have some M855 there. Hopefully you guys can see the green tips. 16 inch barrel here out of the Davidson Defense Rifle. And again, we're at stupid close distances. <laughs> Not advised, kids. Ooh, I don't know if you guys saw it. There's a little spark down there. Y'all saw the impact right there. And once again, no pass through, a little bit of deformation, less than that 30 out six for sure, but that's to be expected. Up next, we have some Tula 762 steel case stuff coming out of the Polish gun. We'll see how she does. Pleasantly surprised how we placed that round there. So I wanted to have it somewhat close to that 30 out six so that way you guys could see sort of how the multi-hit capability works with rifle rounds. Um, you can't guarantee that it's gonna stop multiple rifle rounds that hit the same spot, but if it's just a little bit off and there's still some ceramic there, like we had right here with that 7.60 by 39 round, still stopped it. So we're gonna shoot some fast semi-auto here with some Minuteman munitions, 115 grain out of the eight inch barrel on the AP5 here with the Cash 9K out at the end. We'll see. <laughs> Let's check it out. Obviously this is a rifle rated plate, but as you can see there, it can take a whole bunch of pistol rounds and be just fine too. I don't know how many were actually on there. I, from the shooter's perspective, only a couple missed from what I saw and the majority of them are right down in here. And as you guys can see, lots of damaged ceramic, but the beauty of it, pistol rounds is even if the ceramic's damaged, uh, that uh, polyethylene behind there is still gonna stop it. Um, and as you see, absolutely no pass-throughs at all. At this point, the armor has absolutely lived up to what it's rated for. No doubt about it, as you guys have seen multiple hits, AP 30-06, we have some M193. Once again, coming out of that Davidson defense gun, 16-inch barrel. Thing is now, though, that thing is compromised. So M193 is, you know, full power, 5.56, 55 grain, going fast. My guess is, after a couple rounds, some of them are going to get through. Let's find out. Let's check it out. I'm not entirely sure how many I actually fired. You guys are gonna know that better than me from watching that slow-mo. But picking it up, looking at it, we had two pass-throughs and it looks like one that almost passed through but didn't. So like I said, if you hit that compromised ceramic area with rifle rounds, particularly something like 55 grain, 5.56, five, it will go through it. Um, so again, all armor does die here on the channel, but I have two of these plates. So let's step it up with something that has some real power. With that, we have absolute scientific results here with these plates. They will not stop 50 cal out of a 29 inch barrel at like 20 yards. So on top of that, with the plate that we tested here, again, and the plates that we previously tested here, uh, these absolutely do live up to what they're rated for. And well, you guys already know my opinion on the NIG J testing. And uh, so we just want to take them out here, show you guys that they do work. They're still a good plate, a valuable plate, if it's something that you're into, you know. These things, like I said, are so prolific. 
uh, RMA Defense. These were really kind of like the first affordable, not super heavy composite plates out on the market. They're still making them. And uh, they've passed many an NIJ test in the past. And for whatever reason, there was a controversy this time. I'll let you guys comment down below what you think about it. But that is it, guys. We're going to close the video out there. If you guys like this content and you're not subscribed, easy way to fix that by hitting the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. Additionally, if you guys are subscribed, hit the notification bell and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, uh, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month, so it's not spammy or anything like that. And all it has is all of the videos since my previous month's email went out. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. Additionally, if deals on these plates, armor, other armor, guns, ammo, optics, etc. I think I said armor too many times. But if there's deals on anything like that, it will go out my daily deals email. It has six to eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it's in that email, it's the best deal I know of anywhere for that particular item on that day. So that way I've already done the price comparisons for you to hopefully save you some money and hopefully save you some time as well. So sign up for that. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.